Hey, welcome back to another week of the Bench Warmers. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Brad. Brad, good to be back. Big week in footy. A massive week in footy, Matt. I know we say that a lot, but we, we have had one of the craziest rounds of all time for the Barossa, and I can't wait to get into it in a sec, but it's it's that time of year, isn't it? It's it's heating up, the, the sun's poking through the clouds, and the grass clippings are getting that little bit smellier, and it's smelling a bit like finals. It is. It certainly is, and... The BLG this year has been the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. We'll get into it. But as we said, what a round. The top four's done and dusted. It's done. locked in. Um, stamp it. Finals in a week and a bit's time from this show airing. Uh, how exciting. We've got to thank our major sponsor, the Exchange Hotel, who have been with us all the way on this show, Brad, as well as all of our partners who have come along for the journey this year. We thank you for your support. Looking forward to getting stuck into the footy, Brad, but we're going to have a quick break and thank them before we do. Yes, thank you to all our sponsors who help the show go to air each and every week. Brad, we're going to talk BLG footy very soon, but before we do, thanks to Rejuvenate Sports and Remedial Therapy, let's get straight into the feel-good fill-up. Matt, we had a massive few weeks over in Paris, obviously, <laughs> for the Olympics, and we've, we've been struggling since then. A few of us are in the post-Olympic blues. We don't know mm. what to watch on telly. And the Paralympics hasn't started. Yes, exactly. We're in that awkward little period, we, but I can't wait for that. Now... On the weekend, though, we were delivered the goods. Luckily, the Logies were on, yes. Matt. And yes. one of the greatest to ever do it, one of the greatest that will ever do it, Larry Emder went away with the gold Logie, if you don't mind. He's 59 years old, just yep. getting better with age like a fine wine. The host of the morning show and the chase... And previously, who we will know him the best for, Chucky, the price is right and the wheel of fortune. Come on down, Larry Emder. They were all <laughs> yelling last night when he came down. And he celebrated this morning by getting a Logie, a gold Logie, tattooed on his rear end on live telly on the morning show. And it doesn't get much better than that in Australia for me. It doesn't get much more Aussie than that. What do you reckon? No, well done to Laz, as his yes. love, uh, loved ones call him. And 59, doesn't look a day over 40, Brad. No. So uh, he's doing very, very well, Larry. And uh, there's nothing better back in the day than watching The Prices, right? Yeah. You get home from school. Now it's The yeah. Chase. I yeah. you, I'm a fan of The Chase. You're a fan of The Chase? Yeah, I haven't tuned in recently, but mm. I, I will one day. It's worth it, absolutely. The geek, yeah. he always gets us. Yeah. So, uh, no, uh, well done to Larry. And uh, looking forward to, oh, no doubt, straight into the morning show would have been a party all night yes. into that. And Went on a Larry Emder the night before. Yes, last night, yes. As they say. As they say, the kids yes. these days. Yeah. So, uh, well done to Larry and well done to you on another good feel-good fill-up, Brad. I'm looking forward to what uh, we can put into the feel-good fill-up over the next couple of weeks uh, with finals approaching across all grades. So... Thank you again to Rejuvenate Sports and Remedial Therapy. When we get back, let's talk BLG footy. All right, let's take a look at round 17 in the Barossa. Game one, Brad. Angerston taking on Barossa District. It was 7-11-53. Angerston defeating Barossa. 2-4-16. Comprehensive win in some pretty tough conditions Saturday afternoon. Pretty tough conditions, as we know, Matt. Wet and blustery. For Angerston, it was summered and best on ground. Shepard, Anthony and Tuckwell. Two goals for Barossa. It was Gant, best on ground. God, we've said that a lot. Yes, we year. have. And just the single goal kickers for them. Only two goals kicked uh, maximum for, for the boys there and a notable out this week, and we're going to have to look into this one mm. because uh, we'll be watching the teams closely. No Durden. Jed Durden, he uh, 15 goals ahead on the goal-kicking leaderboard. He was uh, yeah sorely missed from, from Angerson, but they still got the job done with him. And, um, yep, we, we, we all, uh, we're all learning in this game. We don't know why he was out, but he was out. So <laughs> I'll be looking into that one. Yep, I'm looking forward to you chasing up that one because he is a star. Yeah. He's going to win the goal-kicking trophy, as you said. I'm guessing just a little tune-up pre-finals. Yes. Tough day, like think so. I hope bit of rain, serious. not worth playing. They had the your... buyer last week as well, so mm. he hasn't hurt himself last week unless he's Maybe. on a Larry Emder. Who knows? <laughs> he might have. So, uh, and, and Barossa, Brad, they'll be looking one more, and uh, we'll talk about that a bit later, but it yeah. might be a, a sad day for the for the club, farewelling the yes, Oval. We'll not sad for the visitors. No, no. Uh, say farewell to Williamstown this week, but we'll get to that in the we next We will segment, shortly. Sure. Let's have a look at game two, Brad. It was Freeling and Tanunda. Freeling 8-5-53, defeating Tanunda 12-22-94. Yeah, Tanunda came to play at this one, Chucky, and uh, they, they did what they have to after a, a solid lead going into the half. 
Freeling, uh, Aussie Poulton, best on ground, mm. another regular in the in the best there. He might and be getting a call from the Athelstan coach at the year's end. He might. We have mm. some breaking news right there. <laughs> and Cochrane, uh, three goals for them. And for Tanand, it was Schiller, best on ground, with Feltus and Wildman, two goals. Feltus, Chook, yes. started the year. Central District's under-16s, if you don't mind. Played Ooh. a couple games there. Back in the under-17s uh, for Tanunda. He's slotted nicely the last few weeks straight into the A grade and got fifth best and two goals. If Tanunda weren't packed with enough talent already, another homegrown talent's just come bursting through. So that, that just add that to the mix. They do. They've, they've got a lot of talent, yes. Tanunda. They've got a lot of kids down in the Central's program as well, which is exciting. But... Um, I think they're, they're going to be interesting. Obviously, no Linky, no Sutcliffe. Uh, what happens with them over the next couple of weeks? You'll be doing your best detective work on yep. that as well. Bring but boss. Um, also, uh, big milestone for Trent Gers on the weekend, which was nice to see. So, shout out to him. Obviously, tunes into the show each and every week. So, well done, Gersey. Some of the best games of footy um, that you've seen, you've played um, over your career is at the Pies. So, well done, mate. And looking forward to watching the damage they can do in the finals run as well, Brad. Yes, you just get a sense they're tuning up just nicely, Matt. And they're, they're a game clear on top of the ladder. At worst, if, if all things fall the wrong way, they could finish in second, but ultimately that doesn't change a thing anyway, but I think they'll finish nicely on top. Yep, I agree with you there. Next game, Gawler Central taking on South Gawler. Gawler Central 9-13-67, defeating South 20-13-133. A big day for the Gawler Central boys, their 2014 reunion. The weather didn't turn it on for them, uh, and the footy wasn't probably much better to watch, but the boys had a good day, I know. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have slowed them down uh, <laughs> in the stands there, Chook. They, uh, they're a good bunch down there, and they know how to celebrate, that's for sure. For Gawler Central, it was... Williams, best on ground, and Bell kicking four goals. For South, it was Burton, best on ground, and Norman, five. As you said, it was the 2014 reunion for Gawler Central with three grades, I believe, A grade, B grade, and under 15. Correct. There. And 10 years later, your under 15s can have a bit of a dip and celebrate, but they shouldn't uh, back in 2014. No. They should have had a few Coke Zeros yes. then, but, but I'm sure they, they joined in as well. And Jake Asher as well, massive shout out. Yes, to him. 300 games. And he kicked a lovely goal in the last quarter. And uh, from all reports, it was bigger than Buddy's 1,000. <laughs> the crowd went absolutely nuts. Uh, others across the road thought Gawler Central had just hit the lead. That's how, how, how much they were going off. So, now nah, well done, Jake. He is a stalwart of, of the game on field and off field yep. as well. But South, for me, they're restoring a bit of normality. Burton best on ground. Pisani second. And Norman back for his first game in a while, kicking five. So... That's uh, that's they're just starting to hit their straps and get the familiar faces. Well, I was about to say Norman's retired for the fifteenth time in his short career, and yep. um, I heard that three weeks ago he was done and he's back. So good he's to see uh, Matty uh, has made his mind up and decided to play because they're so he's someone that they need. He is Chook, and you love just sort of stirring the pot there. But I'm <laughs> sure he did what he needed to and got his body right. He retired. And he, yes, and he, and he went away and made himself better. And look at him now, five goals. So you could all get stuffed that you're uh, trying to stir the pot there. But no, he is a star, and he he's one that can turn it on in big yeah, games. Yeah, absolutely. As well. uh, quick little shout Not out to the netball as well. Sorry, we don't usually do this, but for South, it was Mel Schmicky. Chuck, four hundred senior 400 games. Four hundred games. If you don't mind since 1994. She's won ten <laughs> flags. I, I just wanted to sneak that in there. I didn't know where to put 94. it in. 94. 1994. 10 flags over across 400 games. There's not many games every year. So she's had to be pretty durable over that That's time. That's a year before we were born, Brad. It, it's, it's a massive effort to keep the calves <laughs> and the knees going for that long. So well done, well done, Mel. Yeah, well she's done, done, Mel. done a fantastic job. Yep. Yep, I agree 700 with that. games between her and Jay Asher that day. Yes, a, fa a fantastic effort. 1994. God, that's, yes. what a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at the last game, Brad. It was Kapunda defeating Nuriupa. Yes. 14-5, 81, 89, sorry, defeating Nuri. 13-10, 88, knocking Nuri out of finals contention with the round to go. And Kapunda's first win of the year. You're speechless. Oh, Matt, I'm and struggling to get don't it out. Often get that. That's the upset of the year. You being <laughs> spe spe speechless. <laughs> I can't even get it out. But this was quite frankly, obviously, the upset of the year, and it came at the worst time for Nuri. They obviously needed that uh, to sit in fourth. They they currently sit fifth, and with the buy next week, they don't have any chance to redeem themselves. Mm. As we said, the top four is now set, and we didn't think it would quite go that way, and I'm, I'm sure a few didn't. For, 
for Kapunda, it was Jacob Lekowiak, best on ground. He's hitting some really nice form. I, I think he's sort of waltzing he's a good through player. the midfield. Always yeah. ends up in the goal kickers as well. And for them, it was five goal kickers. We won't list them all. We're on a tight time schedule. <laughs> uh, five goal kickers had a couple goals to their name. For Newry, it was Jackson Baldwin uh, hitting some nice form as well, best on ground, and Wilfred, uh, three goals. Newry, they were 84 to 51 at Bruh. three quarter time, probably just sort of ready to, to get themselves through the last 100%. quarter. Kapunda obviously outscored 38 to four points in the last quarter, <laughs> and it had it all that game. Scott Taylor kicked the match winner for Kapunda. He created something out of nothing. The, the ball was just wob wobbling everywhere. It wasn't really moving, and he's, he's picked it up, copped a big hit, snapped it over his shoulder, and, and that ended up being the winner for Kapunda. And Nuri, those four points, they missed some very gettable ones as well. So they'll be, uh, they're a quality side, quality bunch of blokes, but they, we said there's going to be one unlucky team, and there is with a week to go. Well, the fact is, it would have been, I mean, that the destiny was in their own hands, yeah. and they've let, they've let it slip. It would have been great to come down to every, the results go all the way they should have, and some team misses out, but um, they got no one but themselves to blame for this, Nuri. The, there's some reports from the ground that if we had the arc in the BLG, the result might have gone a little bit differently. Yes. So uh, we, we don't have that technology, unfortunately, in the BLG. But um, momentum, Brad, in football, the hardest thing to stop. Yeah. Uh, Shane Crawford said recently, the person that works that out uh, will be worth billions and billions of dollars. And it, you can see there you've got a team that hasn't won a game all year get it on some, a momentum run and they can go and uh, beat a team that's played in the last couple of premierships. Uh, Grand final, sorry, and being at the top of the ladder. It's, yeah. a, it's a funny thing what it can do to people. It's a, it's a funny old thing, and it's a funny old league this year, the Barossa <laughs> League, and I, I love covering it every week. But that, that's, that is as big as it gets, and it's come at, as we said, the worst time for Newry. Yep. I might have been with some of the South Gawler boys on Saturday night, yeah. and they were very thankful for what Kapunda had done to help them keep the season alive. So well done to the Bombers. Great win. No doubt they celebrated very yes. hard knowing them up there, and Brad, as well. And a big week well. coming up this week. They all of a sudden can get themselves off the bottom of the ladder. We'll talk about that shortly, Brad. We're going to have a break, thank our sponsors, and then get into that. Righto, Brad. Let the last round of the home and away season in the Barossa. Let's get stuck into the ladder first. Talk to us. Obviously, the top four is locked in. Yep. Who is it? What does it look like? And then let's have a look at the games this yeah, week. Yeah, we had this all mapped out, Chuck, a few <laughs> weeks ago. We had all our graphs, all our stats and everything, and we had it all lined up, and obviously the upset of the century uh, happened on the weekend, and it's thrown everything out. So I've screwed up all my old notes, and the top four is locked. We've got Tanunda, 13 wins, Williston, 12 wins, Anguston, 11 wins, tied with South. Uh, so Angus and the South both on 11, and Newry are on 10 wins, uh, sitting in fifth and... Yes, counting their, their losses. But that's, it's nearly just about locked in. We'll get into it in a sec. We do have some massive games. A couple things that can happen. Williston can potentially flip with Tanunda. Not that that changes, but it would be nice, uh, nice bragging rights to finish on top. Angerston can also flip with Williston. So Williston can be anywhere from first to third. So still a lot of good footy to happen this week and a lot of important footy. Yep, looking forward to getting into it, Brad. Let's have a look at game one. And it is 1v4, Tanunda vs South. Massive game, Matt, as we said. However, a, a tricky game for both of them because I don't, South can't really move. Tanunda can't lose their second spot. Tricky game to come into mentally, that's for sure. So I'm going to go with Tanunda, but I wouldn't be surprised if South give this a good shake. They're, they're starting to hit some form. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go the Lions. Yeah. I reckon Tanunda might be... Uh, they might just park a couple this week yeah. Yeah, if they've got some sore bodies and... Um, South will be looking to keep keep that momentum that they're trying to build. So I'm going to go with the Lions to get the pies yep. in game one. Uh, next game, Brad Barossa District taking on Freeling. Massive game. This one, Matt, for other reasons. This yeah. is Williamstown's <laughs> farewell game. Yeah. Good, not good riddance. Oh, good, it yeah. is good riddance. Yes, yeah. goodbye, Williamstown. I'm sure all the white shorts of the uh, mm. away teams will be much happier next year going forward. But... We, there'd be a lot of there'd be a lot of good memories there. We do have a joke about the surface and, and yes. whatnot, but that that's been a, a, a loyal servant mm -hmm. to uh, Barossa for a long time. And uh, last game there, Lindock next year will uh, get a little bit of an upgrade. So mm -hmm. I think Barossa because they'll want to go out with a massive win. Last game of the year, last game at Williamstown. 
massive. Yep, I agree, Brad. Nothing better than when those showers flood. Uh, I remember yep. one day swimming in them, yep. um, in the showers. That would have been which a were, sight. It was, yep. yes. Uh, some things we can't talk about on the show happened, yep. but it was uh, all fun and games. So we'll miss uh, Williamstown Oval very dearly, but uh, looking forward to Lindock Oval. My tip is Barossa will win easy in that one as well, Brad. Uh, let's have a look at Williston taking on Angerston. Now, this is the one where our maths aren't great, yeah. but we're thinking um, if there is an upset one way or another, it could change a few things. Yeah, I, I went to have a go at calculating it, what exactly it looks like. But obviously, we've got Williston 12 wins, Angerston 11 wins, and, and a little bit of percent between yeah. them. So a, a big enough win from Angerston does get that position mm -hmm. flip, and that's massive in Barossa. You get the second chance. So somewhere around a four to six goal win allegedly could make things interesting, Matt. We, we don't know if it will get the job done, but a couple goals, obviously that's the team they're versing, <laughs> so you double that as the difference. But mm. I gave it a go and I, I gave up. So I, I don't know how that's going to actually play out Saturday because I couldn't work it out. I'm sure there's some smarter people than me at Williston and Angerston that can. Who are you tipping? Who my tip is, <laughs> is Williston. And I don't think the ladder will change. So I, th I think Williston are playing some really nice footy. I'm with you. I'm going the Donny Brooks are there as well. Last game, Brad, and this could be the biggest game of them all. Yes. Uh, Kapunda taking on Gawler Central for the wooden spoon. Yes. So both tied on one win with only a couple percent between them. Not that that will matter unless no. there's, a, there's a draw, obviously. <laughs> I think as a numbers man, the informed team of these two, you would have to say, is Kapunda. They, yep. They've given a, a few other teams a good shake and they've hit their first win on the, on the weekend. So Gawler Central hopefully have something to say about that. But I think Kapunda will jump. Leaving Gawler Central, I believe, potentially their first ever wooden spoon. I, I could be wrong. I, I think you're right. I, I'm pretty sure that is the case. Um, I, I certainly don't remember one over our history, but um, and people I've spoken to don't remember us performing as badly as yeah. this over our history. So uh, I think you might be right, and I'm going with you. I think the Bombers uh, are just travelling a bit better, and they'll be up and about after last week. We're looking to finish the year off strongly, building into 2025. So I'm with you on the Bombers there, Brad. Big round of footy. Uh, doesn't impact the ladder as much as we thought it would, but still, no doubt, still big games uh, yeah. nonetheless. And looking forward to being back to dissect that next week, along with our first week of finals, which I yeah. can't wait for as well. So, thank you to everyone that tuned in. Again, thank you to all our sponsors, and we'll be back next week to wrap up round 18 and have a look at our first week of finals.